without further ado, let's dive into my labs. Again, I'm going to get to all of these um, during this podcast. I did lipids. I did hormones. I did inflammatory markers. I did uh, thyroid. I did iron studies. I got pretty much very comprehensive panel, but this is the most important piece of any blood work, I think, to set the context. You must know the framework uh, of any blood work before you are thinking about it. So insulin, fasting insulin, mine is 2.4, okay? IGF-1 is 112. And if we look up, I can show you my fasting glucose, which I believe was 79 with a hemoglobin A1C of 5. So this is actually probably where I should start. Insulin, fasting insulin, 2.4, hemoglobin A1C, 5.2, fasting blood sugar, 79. And then you can take the fasting insulin and the fasting glucose and calculate a HOMA IR score. It's just a calculated indicator of insulin resistance. These are all very, very good in my opinion. I don't think anyone would debate that I'm extremely insulin sensitive that my fasting blood sugar is exemplary and my hemoglobin A1C of 5.2 reflects an average blood sugar of 103 milligrams per deciliter over the last 90 days. Hemoglobin A1C is a measure of the average blood sugar over the last 93 days. You can see my fasting blood sugar in the morning was 79. And so this is important. So what do I want to talk about here? I want to note that with a massive amount, quote unquote, of fruit and honey in my diet, I remain extremely insulin sensitive. I don't think anyone would argue this. There are people on the keto side who would say honey is bad for you. And hopefully I'll be able to have conversations with them in the near future and talk it out in an interesting way. But I disagree. I think there's lots of good evidence that honey is great for humans. I've shown it many times on the podcast previously. And people would also say fruit is bad. It's going to raise your blood sugar. Well, um, of course, it's going to raise your blood sugar after you eat it postprandially, but I think that the real problem that people are pointing at here is, are you insulin resistant? And no, I am not insulin resistant. In my case, and I think in all cases of homo sapiens, eating fruit and eating honey will not make you insulin resistant in any way, shape, or form. These foods should not be eaten at the exclusion of other foods, which are also valuable parts of the human diet that are nutrient-rich like meat and organs and animal fats. You should not become a fruitarian, but I think having some fruit and honey in your diet are great sources of carbohydrates and will improve your performance. Whether you're doing jujitsu, whether you're surfing, whether you're running, whether you're sprinting, whether you're lifting weights, this I think is the key one of the key things that I learned in my journey from carnivore strictly to animal-based that adding carbohydrates in improved my hormones, as you'll see, my thyroid, my testosterone, it improved my muscle cramps, it improved my mental clarity, it improved cardiac issues like heart palpitations, which are related to electrolyte issues, it improved so many things. And my fasting insulin actually probably went down. My fasting blood sugar went down when I added carbohydrates. Uh, I think I have a fasting blood sugar from when I was on carnivore. They're usually high 90s or 100s because there is some physiologic insulin resistance, which is different than pathologic insulin resistance that develops when we are on a ketogenic diet. These are the reasons that I am not a fan of ketogenic diets. I don't think that they serve us well long-term as humans. I've talked about this many, many times, and hopefully I'll be able to do a podcast exclusively on that topic. Fasting insulin should be less than five micro IU per ml. Again, mine was 2.4, 2.4. The, I believe the median for the American population is nine. If you look at this blood work, you'll see that if I click on this insulin, it says low risk is less than nine. That is bullshit. <laughs> this reference range is way too big. Moderate risk is nine to 24. Look, if you are a six, a seven, an eight, or a nine, that's not good. You do not want to be that insulin resistant. A 24, that's massively insulin resistant. Anything above a nine to a nine to 24, that's extremely insulin resistant. There's This reference range should be much tighter. I think it would change the face of medicine as we know it today. But start with a fasting insulin, then triangulate it with a fasting glucose, get a hemoglobin A1C. If you want to know what your average blood sugar over the last three months 
has been, or where a continuous glucose monitor from a company like Nutrisense. I've done multiple podcasts with Kara, a dietitian from Nutrisense, talking about how to interpret your continuous blood glucose monitor findings. But this is the most important piece of this blood work is to show you guys the context. I am insulin sensitive and I eat a shitload of fruit and a lot of honey per day. How much? Well, you can watch my stories on Instagram, but today I've eaten, I think I've eaten an entire papaya. I've eaten close to an entire pineapple and I've probably had three to four tablespoons of honey already today and I haven't even eaten dinner. Now dinner will probably be another 50 to 75 grams of carbohydrates, but that's a lot of carbohydrates that I've already ingested. Yes, my postprandial after meal blood sugar is going to go up, but I don't worry about that. I remain insulin sensitive. Insulin is a valuable hormone. Having an after meal, a postprandial spike in your insulin does so many good things for your body. It helps your body conserve minerals. Uh, it helps your body conserve electrolytes. This is why people on long-term ketogenic diets often run into recalcitrant electrolyte deficiencies and no amount of salt or electrolyte supplementation will correct them. I've seen this over and over and over. Giving your body some insulin is a good thing. Insulin is not the enemy in this situation. And I think that you can eat a lot of raw honey and a lot of fruit and not develop insulin-induced insulin resistance. This, unfortunately, I think is where many in the ketogenic field go wrong in their thinking. They believe that more insulin is always bad. You should have your insulin as low as possible all the time. I think that is wrong. I think phasic, right, postprandial, after you eat, pulses of insulin are healthy and essential for optimal human health. You want to spike your insulin after a meal. You want it to come down very low, which is a reflection of your overall insulin sensitivity. Hopefully that makes sense. What causes pathological insulin resistance, seed oils, and processed sugars. I think that that can lead to some degree of insulin-induced insulin resistance, but also metabolic insulin resistance, metabolic dysfunction through more complex mechanisms that are beyond the scope of this podcast.